Hello everybody, today I've got a pair of Allen Edmonds Corn Wallace. This would be an Adelaide Oxford. The uppers are in so-so condition, but here's what's kind of special about them. The soles, look at this, are basically freshly recrafted. So I'm gonna clean these up, shine them, and I'm also gonna put a patina on them, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. All right, everybody, I just wanted to show you this real quick here. I actually got a piece of, uh, I, I think I already know what this is. I do know what this is. Piece of fan mail. Um, and this is from a viewer who noted that he watched me sometimes in the garage and said, hey, you know, sometimes your sleeves or, or whatever don't get that stuff caught. This is pretty cool. Wow, look at this. I think he said he made it. Um, and I got so excited I forgot to look at the... Oh, this is cool. Um, do you guys... Can you tell what this is? My younger daughter is my videographer right it's now. It's an apron. It's an apron. Yeah, apron Isn't that cool? Look at this thing. So it's got... Look at this. It's got brass... Uh, what do you call these things? They're not turnbuckles. It's got the double loopy things here. So you... Right? You know what I'm talking about. Right? That thing. Look at that. How awesome is this? And it's got a spot, I think, for... A couple different things. I think pens and what would the other thing be? A ruler or something? Yeah, probably. Yeah, look at that. How awesome is this, huh? No, I really look like a cobbler, don't I? I need to maybe just get my logo put in or something like that, but that's awesome. Thank you, man. This is cool. I'll keep this in the garage and I'll use this or maybe downstairs when I, uh, you know. Can you it? Yep, thank you. So let me show you what we've got here. And as I said in the intro, this is a pair of Cornwallis. This is an Oxford. Oxford means that the flaps here are sewn underneath the vamp, so you get a closed lacing system. It's a little more formal, it's beautiful. It's almost a hole cut, it's not quite a hole cut. So Adelaide is where you have this U-shaped cut here. Sometimes it's even just a line of stitching. It's called an Adelaide Oxford. Uh, it's got a nice, beautiful medallion on the toe. And the uppers are in good condition, except for uh, one or two little areas. I believe these have been polished with darker polish. It looks like to me dark polish is getting in the creases and further accentuating them. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, but what's neat about these things is they've been freshly recrafted. I don't think they've been worn since the recraft. That little hammer there, that is a hammer. That little hammer logo is Allen Edmonds factory stamp when they recraft a shoe. What they do is they strip off the heel block, the heel, strip off the old sole. Um, they actually also strip off the welt. This, this piece of leather here is a welt. If you don't know what that is and you want to learn, I'll link a video in the description below. Uh, they put a new welt on it, new cork filler, new outsole, um, and uh, new heel blocks and new heel, right? So these have been, like I said, freshly recrafted. This shoe though is, uh, there's a little bit going on. I'm not sure what that is. If that's been product that's been applied, I, I don't know. Um, I was kind of picking at it a little bit. And it's just right here. And I've been looking at this. Um, I want to really get, I wanted to show the shoes before I did anything to them, but um, I am pretty certain if you can see there, that actually is a little bit of a crack. That's gonna be kind of a challenge because it is on the flex point. You see, can you see the leather bend in there when you flex the shoe there? That's right, right behind the reinforcement. The reinforcement ends right there. The cap tail reinforcement ends right there. So maybe it's leather quality. Maybe it's a lack of care on these shoes because you can see a little bit of crazing on the surface that could be sanded out. Um, or maybe it is because this cap should have come a little further back. Maybe it should have been skived. Skive is when you thin leather down. Maybe it should have been thinned a little, a little more. I don't know. Uh, but that's the major challenge. Um, now, so first of all, let's try and take a guess as to when these shoes were uh, recrafted. So based on the logo, if you can see here the logo, uh, the logo says Allen Edmonds. Big A, big E, lowercase, the rest of it is lowercase. And with this tanned, I call it tanned, but this, uh, you know, stained uh, insole here, that style insole, I would say is from 2013 to 2017. You can see more like, this is more like the current style logo. This logo started, I believe, in late 2018. So um, you can see some of the older shoes here where I'll have an insole uh, like this, which is, you know, not really colored. It's just kind of a natural color. 
So I know these shoes were made in approximately between 2013 to 2015 uh, because of that uh, logo and the install style, insole style. In 2017, they added what I call the 1922 badge to the Allen Edmund shoes. So I believe these were recrafted in either 19, uh, 2017 or 2018 is when this was done. Okay. So I picked these up for $25, which, yeah, you know, that's not, if they didn't have really good soles, it might not be worth it. But so like I said, first thing I'm going to do is try and strip off all the wax off of these, get that really nice and bare, see what I've got there, repair that. Um, you know, maybe do a little bit of light sanding, like here you can see some, I think that's actual physical damage, like those scuffed against a curb or something like that, or a step. Um, and then I'm going to put a dye patina on them. Um, I'm going to go with either like a museum effect, um, like a tan and brown museum effect, or navy, but I'm, I'm not decided yet. For the actual, what I believe is a crack, we'll take a better look at it once it's cleaned. I'm going to use this product. This actually is a product that's not been made available to the public in the United States yet. And this is from LM Professional. A gentleman that's gonna become a US distributor for this product reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try this. So just to kind of give you, a, I guess, an FYI, I was not paid for this, but the product was sent to me for free. And you know, I'm gonna give my honest opinion. I'm gonna try this on hopefully a few different pairs of shoes and give you guys some updates down the road. Uh, but this is called the LM Filler. And uh, I've got the instructions right here. Basically, in a nutshell, the instructions say to remove any dust or dirt, trace of dust or dirt with a damp cloth. Uh, fill the cut hole or scratch in the leather by using a small spatula. Leave it to dry for a minimum six to eight hours and then sand it. And then apply the stop crash, which is this stuff. Like here is, for example, black. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different colors here. I think about six different colors and you can mix it to get different tones like for example here is a yellow um and here is like a tan so i'll probably be going with the tan and then you know trying to mix that up to match okay so i'm gonna give this a shot you know what man we start working on these shoes i'm gonna be using some dyes i'm gonna be using reno mat to strip stuff off it would kind of be a shame to you know to get stuff on this this cool shirt right oh look at this one of my viewers actually sent this to me this was sent to me by Walter, Walter Farrick. I really appreciate it. Now look at this thing. Now, Candace over at Blonde Lobster Embroidery in Stowe, Ohio, did the embroidery. It didn't come with that. I'll put a link in the description below. But you can tell, oh, by the way, you can tell this thing is actually handmade uh, because like you see, you know, you can see some of the little threads and stuff like that sticking up. So I know that he made it himself. This thing's like awesome. It's made out of like heavy duty. Um, I would say like, a, I'm not sure what you call it. It's a canvas type cloth, but it's heavy duty stuff. So I think I'm gonna choke it up so that I get the maximum coverage here. Is that pretty sweet? Look at that. My kids are gonna think I'm really cool now. Step one, Reno mat. This stuff is terribly smelly. Uh, this to me, it will, my experience it'll strip everything off of a shoe it usually keyword usually uh usually means sometimes it will but it usually doesn't um you know take the color off of the shoe it'll take all the polish and everything off sometimes it will lighten the color of the shoe but generally doesn't um but like acetone is almost guaranteed to you know make the shoes in such a state that you'll have to re-dye them i hate the shape of this bottle it's so narrow and this stuff is a liquid you tip it and stuff is pretty expensive but um, so, like I said, what you want to do with the shoe, though, if you're not sure about whether or not it's going to harm the color, here's what you always want to do. Some people say try it on the inside, but if that's lightened, I still won't like it. Always go on the tongue of the shoe. If you're not sure if something is going to harm the finish of your shoes, always try it on the tongue first. Because the tongue is the one area, especially if you do it like I'm kind of reaching into the inside of the tongue. It's the one area of the shoe you know is not going to be seen. You see that? So anyway, I, in this case, I'm redying these shoes, so I really don't care. But you get the idea, okay? So always test it out on the tongue. Man, this stuff smells bad. I was just reading an article on uh, vcleat.com. Vcleat, the Bible of all things a vintage shoe. Uh, David, the author of that website, was using this stuff, and he said, I think the quote was, smells like it'll shorten my lifespan, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> See, look at that, just a couple seconds. Eww. Yes, this rag is terribly dirty, but don't matter. The blue is dye, so that's not gonna come off onto the shoes. 
going to get it filthy anyway. It's not going to get the shoes dirtier than they already are. And this one's pretty dried out. You can see it did lighten the color a little bit. I don't consider that stripping the dye, but these are full grain leather shoes. Um, and I scrubbed, I'm literally sweating. I scrubbed as hard as I could. I might even need more. I think, I think they're still in the crevices there of the wrinkles. I still, there. I may have to do a little more. I think there's still a little bit of color in there, but the next step, uh, I'll, I'll do that off camera, but then I'm gonna try and sand some of these really rough spots out. I'm gonna start fairly fine with 220 grit. By the way, do not attempt this on a pair of expensive shoes the first time. Get good at this on a pair of old trash shoes uh, well before you ever do this. Number one, number two, don't do this on corrected green shoes. If you don't know what that means, see the links in the description below. to a piece of 400. Mm -hmm. Stand. Actually, I didn't sand. That's a little bit of a surface crack right there. I didn't sand that. I probably should. Now I'm looking at it. I think that was just a deep wrinkle with some surface cracking. I don't think I need to... I'm not sure that I need to fill it. <sighs> Now I've gotten to a reasonable state. I think if I go any more, I'm gonna do more damage than good. Uh, but I'm afraid that this is gonna cause some problems in the dyeing process. So I'm gonna take some acetone and try and strip that to kind of even it up. Acetone is about the harshest of the uh, solvents that you could possibly use. It's not good for the leather. It's very rapidly. Watch this. That's about 10 seconds. Man, look at that. It does pretty much take that color off, doesn't it? So here's the Cornwallis ready to be airbrushed. And I have my friend Hayden here. You guys may remember Hayden from, I'll put a video a link in the description. Alan Edmonds that won't shine. There was a spot on a toe cap. What kind of was it? The Park Avenue? Park Avenue in dark chili. And so that was another video I did, I don't know, was that a year, year and a half ago? Oh, easily, yes. And how many pairs of Alan Edmonds are you up to now? This, these are my, these are my third. third? I have, I have oh, some okay. Samuel Hubbard's 
okay. which are uh, odd, odd, the odd ones out in my collection. But mm-hmm. yes, brand new, brand new. Uh, Alan Edmonds bought uh, post COVID, and uh, these are some more Park Avenues, and these are in Walnut. And um, ooh, look at that. Yes. So we will probably do a video on this uh, on on uh, Bob's you know thoughts on the stitch density and the quality of uh, brand new shoes uh, coming from because I know a lot of people are, are you know worried concerned have thoughts about quality so we will you know we'll touch on that yeah. but uh, Bob will give his professional uh, <laughs> semi-professional. <laughs> semi-professional thoughts there as absolutely, well absolutely we'll do that later time yes but the reason we have these shoes out why why do we have these shoes out if we're dying the Cornwallises because spoiler alert we're also going to be dying these blue Yes. So in essence, what's happening is the Cornwallises, I was just going to do kind of like a mild, um, you know, dark brown around here, dark brown, you know, to walnut kind of more traditional burnish. But I want to use these as a guinea pig because I'd rather mess up a pair, do my first, uh, what, what do we call this, museum, I guess? This would yes. be a museum patina. I want to make my first one on a pair of $25 shoes, not $395 shoes. So, all right. So I, you're not going to see these uh, finished product in this video, but... So here we go. Here we go. Now I've got the shoes prepped, taped off the welts, and just to make sure paint or uh, you know dye doesn't get on the inside of the shoe either. Uh, they've already been wiped down and cleaned, so these things should be ready to go. Now remember, this is going to be a museum patina. So first, I'm going to put down uh, just a fairly not light blue, but a lighter shade. We don't want to saturate it and make this a uh, navy blue. So um, uh, I diluted the dye about three or four parts of reducer to one part navy dye. I'm going to put on fairly light, so here we go. All right, here it some lessons um, what I'm noticing is other than I'm turning into a smurf should have worn gloves can you see how it's shiny here and if I turn it it's not just the way the lights glaring it's dull here this is where I sanded and I sanded heavily here um, two things I'm learning from this number one the color is different where there was leftover tan okay number two the a leather is more porous where you've sanded it Right, that makes sense. Now, your new shoes haven't been sanded, right? So I think it's going to be fine because, you know, doing a museum. Yeah. But if you were trying to make these one color, I think it'd be a problem. Yes, I think so. Does that make sense? See, like even this one, it's almost more of like that vibe. It's really a different color. Mm. There's a difference in color between where the leather was all the way sanded down and not. Mm, very much. You see? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I should have stripped it harder, stripped it more with the acetone, been rougher with it. But that's just something I noticed, um, and that's part of the learning process. But so, I think the leather is still okay. But I've noticed where you don't strip it as well, you get that shiny look when you strip it better, you know. So I think this these shoes probably I should have scrubbed them harder with acetone first. So I want to make sure that we do scrub yours, even though they should have no wax on them. Make sure that we yeah. get them done really well. Okay, excellent. Okay, now, but did I drip? Look at that. 
Hmm. I dripped. I must have dripped ac uh, acetone on there when I was pouring. Right? I made a light spot. All right, here's nothing. Is this going to be visible, I guess, is my question. I think so. Hmm. So do sort of leopard... You do sort of leopard spot shape. Whoa. Hmm. Now that's almost a green, right? Yeah. I think that's too much spray. I think so, yeah. And I can see you can play with it with a dry brush, you know? Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm. So that ran there, obviously, right? Yep. Because that was way too much. So I just did was I just saturated. Yeah. And then just squeeze the cloth. Try and get an effect. I don't know. Acetone almost took some of the color out. Yeah. I mean, it really did take some of the color out. Hmm. That's clearly darker. I would say, right? Yep. Right. And I wonder if I can get the dr brush to dry. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm trying to use up what's in it. Does that soften the... Yeah, that does soften the edge, doesn't it? Yes. I really do think I should have stripped these better. I thought I had them stripped, but I've been doing this intermittently and, you know, other things in life happening with some health challenges with family. And I've been putting these, you know, on the shelf and coming back to them five days later. And now there, it's just way too light. See now the brush is drying. Yep. And you can. That does work. Mm. The brush is like, you know, very dry. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. Like it almost takes the color off of the leather. Yes. Just takes it. Up. I mean, it's doing its job. It's stripping the dye. Yeah. See, then it's getting down to almost like a green there, yeah. which is not horrible. Mm. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to darken it as much as I can around this character line. Blatantly so. And pull it out a little bit. The dry brush really does seem to help a lot. Like I just don't want that hard line, the harsh lines there. I think that's too light back there. So I learned something today. Yes. Walnut and blue make green. Yes. I think that's what because walnut's a shade of yellow, really. Yes, it is. Yes. So we're going back to what third grade, fifth grade, yellow and yellow uh, and yeah, blue yeah. make green. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. I mean. Sometimes I feel, to be honest with you, I feel really dumb doing this stuff sometimes because I feel like, I mean, I'm not the dumbest guy on the planet, you know what I mean? So if this is a revelation to me, I'm sure there's at least another human being who's, you know, equally as interested in this result as I am, and I can't be, you know? Mm. I don't know if that even makes sense. So if we don't want green, if we want sort of a, 
of shades of blue and then we need to get the leather as close to white as we can as i think yes. what that tells me because you can see i on the areas i didn't spend a ton of time stripping um i thought i did but now that i'm really thinking back about it i didn't mm. so the stripping stage is going to be really important if you don't like the green i personally like it shoes i'm wearing right now if i can get them in the camera i'm not going to lift my leg up that high these are the ones done by patina expert alberto suastez they have some of that in there and that's what he told me is i thought he used green dye in the transition areas of these shoes and he told me he did not and he said that's just a function of the um the blue being translucent if you know i can get it i don't think that's going to be too bad this is i know this is what you were looking for in yours but i think this is going to work once there's polish on it i have to see i don't know Worst comes worse, I strip them and redo it. Mm. Or just darken the whole thing to like a midnight blue. Well, if we, yes, if we sort of put a very dark blue on would, and then did a light it, no, it wouldn't work, would it? No. Maybe we need to find some kind of really small spray bottle. Yeah, it's like a sort of a teat pipette, maybe. A what? A uh, teat pipette, like an eye drop bottle. Eye drop. It's just going to drip it out, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I'm not sure of on your shoes mm -hmm. is what the color is going to come out like. Yes. Not the pattern. I think the pattern I can see that I can control, but the color. So if you really don't want any green in it, I think we really got to strip them really well. I think we're stripping, yeah, that's the key, isn't it? Which, that's another thing that we don't know is how, you know, how much are we going to be able to strip them? You know, that's another unknown. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to get to a white crust leather. No, but it will get, if we sort of really put the effort in to make the effort to really strip them hard. I really want to wait to see these shined up and then I want you to tell me what you think of them when these are done because every time I've done any dyeing of shoes they look pretty disappointing to be frank with you before you polish them yeah because you know, they have no sheen on them and it's like this it's like uh, you know mm. even the first shoes I did the Bostonian loafers that I did I didn't strip those as well as I should have and it was just like this shiny and dull you know I was like, uh, and then, but they came out beautiful. You know, by the time it was all, you know, moisturized and everything set in and mm. polished them. I don't know whether I should really do too much more to these. I feel like I'm getting to the point of diminishing returns. Yeah, that's right. I could spend more and more and more time and it's going to look no different. I'm just going to drive myself crazy. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's uh, okay. yeah, quit. Give, them a, give them a polish and see what they turn out like. Yeah. Next, especially because of all the abuse we did to the leather, I'm going to condition them. Um, I usually like to use Pure Polish Cleaner Conditioner. Um, I'm going to go ahead this time, though. I'm going to use a Sapphire because I just want to use this up, um, you know. So, uh, I, and the other reason is because the dye is probably going to get in here. I don't want to get blue dye on my good stuff, so I'm just going to use this, and I need to use it up anyway.
experiment here. I'm actually going to use a little burgundy. It's got a purple hue to it, like a brown purple hue to it. Uh, board, yeah, burgundy polish. This is sapphire. Um, and I'm going to experiment with this on some of the lighter areas, like maybe right in there. Spit shine. Running low. I touch, let my finger rest there for a minute, a couple seconds, to warm it up. finished up. Now, I love them. They're really good for my first attempt at a marbled. Patina, let me give you my, I should give you my honest feedback. They're not really marbled. I mean, the marbling is, there's my dog. The marbling is not very obvious. I'm outside uh, on a sunny day in shade, which I think is a very, it's a fair uh, lighting. See, from this angle, it will kind of look solid. From this angle, you can definitely see different colors. You can see green and even a hint of tan in there. So it's not very marbled. I should say the marbling is not very obvious. And I need to work on my technique with the uh, acetone. 
the color is not navy. The toes are navy, but the color is more of a blue and a, and a green. And I guess the overall color kind of gives you something between a teal and a, um, a green, I guess, or something between a blue and a blue green. So I think these would go well with anything blue. You could pass them off as blue and you can wear them with something that's got green in it. See when I go to the side. So, I don't want you guys to think that I'm trying to pass myself off as an expert in this. That's why this is not a how-to video. And these are the perfect pair of shoes to learn on because they're nice enough, you know, to try and make something look good. But they're also cheap enough that if I totally botched it up, you know, I only paid 25 bucks for them. So, I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I'm not actually, you know, trying to learn. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to figure this stuff out. So, before we attempt Hayden's uh, brand new Park Avenues, I'm definitely going to do one more patina. I'm going to find one more pair of walnut shoes. So next time I will. Here's my next time I wills. Next time I will strip the color completely off very well with acetone. I honestly just screwed up on that. I must not have really stripped the entire shoe. I thought I did. Um, I started on these shoes probably three weeks ago. Um, my mother's been ill. She's you know, uh, she's getting up there in age. My attention has been split. I've been taking time off of work to take care of her. And my focus just hasn't been 100%. I apologize, guys. I don't want to sound like I'm making excuses, but that's just what's been going on in my life. Um, you know, YouTube is not a livelihood for me. It's a hobby. And other things have to come first in my life first. But um, so next time I will strip the shoes down really well. I'm also going to get a small spritzer, like something that sprays just a little bit. And I think those two things together, the dye is going to absorb more readily into the shoes. And then I think if I get something that could spray just a tiny amount of acetone, I think I'll be able to do that marbling effect better. Um, so the base color, the base of the shoe needs to be lighter uh, so that I can use a lighter blue. I think what happened was because I didn't strip out enough of that walnut tan color and I was trying to put in uh, navy blue diluted, that's what gave me that greenish color. So I don't dislike the green, but Hayden definitely doesn't like it. So if I'm gonna achieve the effect that he wants, I need to get better at this. So thank you so much guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you already haven't. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos, where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one.